brand is created by default. Culture is created by default. It's how people show up. It's how they interact with people. It's how you communicate with each other. This is important for us to consider, especially as leaders. This is Lead with Culture. I'm Kate Volman, and on this episode, we are talking about building your personal brand. What's your personal brand? Do you ever think about your personal brand? Because just like culture, your culture is being created, whether you like it or not, so is your personal brand. You have a brand. It's how you show up. It's how people perceive you. It's how people interact with you. What do people say about you when you're not in the room? (laughs) And so you are creating your personal brand every single day. Probably a good idea to be a little bit more intentional about your brand so that you are creating a brand that you're really proud of. So let's hear what Matthew Kelly has to say about it. What's your personal brand? Everyone has a brand. Some people's brand is, he is always late. Other people's brands are, she is always so helpful, or she is always the first to leave, or he is such a hard worker, or she is so committed. The list goes on. Everybody has a personal brand. What do you want yours to be? Some people overcommit, and underdeliver. As a result, their brand becomes unreliable. Some people crush whatever project you give them. That becomes their brand. And every team has that person who wants the ball in those last seconds when it matters most, when one shot is the difference between winning and losing. The person who always comes through when it really matters. That's his personal brand. Most people's personal brand is developed by default. They didn't set out to create that brand, it just happened. What happens to organizations that just let their brand happen? Right, they probably go out of business. Organizations spend billions of dollars creating and perpetuating their brand. The least you can do is be intentional about yours. What do you want your brand to be? Define it. Then after a year, ask the people you work with to write down anonymously what they think your brand is in the workplace. You'll need thick skin. Great brands have thick skin. Use what you learn from the feedback to hone your brand the following year. So if you're thinking about building your personal brand, you might be asking yourself, where should you start? That's up to you. But if you're stuck, start with the big three, committed, coachable, and aware. If you're committed, coachable, and aware, you will succeed. It is a recipe for success at anything personally and professionally. Get really, really good at these three things. Even if your organization doesn't embrace them, these are the three best things you can do for both your career and your life. Imagine a marriage in which both partners are committed, coachable, and aware. Imagine parents who are committed, coachable, and aware. Imagine being committed, coachable, and aware in the area of personal finance or health and well-being. The point is, whether we have ever thought about it or not, everyone has a brand and your brand starts on day one. So whether today is your first day at an organization or you've been there for 10 years, make today day one. When a new president takes office, a lot of attention is paid to what he or she will accomplish in the first 100 days. If today is your new day one, what are you going to accomplish in your first 100 days? Take this seriously, and 100 days from now, people will be saying, wow, she has really stepped it up. Whatever you want your brand to be, write it down, read it daily, and do at least one thing every day to demonstrate that brand. Great brands are always before us. I have often wondered what would happen if Coke stopped advertising for a year? They would save billions, but would people drink less Coke after one year? Who knows? What about after two years? Mm, Risky, five years? I am certain their brand and sales would take a hit. Keep your brand your personal brand in front of people every day. There is one thing I'm looking to create in everything I do, indisputable value. 
Go to work each morning looking to create indisputable value, and I can promise you a rich and rewarding career and life. Creating indisputable value is its own reward. It doesn't matter if anyone notices, compliments you for it, or even pays you for it. The best things in life are their own reward. They don't need to be acknowledged by anybody else. Generosity is its own reward. Doing great work is its own reward. Raising children is its own reward. Nobody else even needs to know about things that are their own reward. We can just hold them in our hearts and treasure them. That's what makes things such as random acts of kindness or unexpected acts of love cause our hearts and souls to dance for joy. Indisputable value is hard to find, but not that hard to create. How do you know when you're creating indisputable value at work? You become indispensable, which is no joke. Would your leader be miserable if you said you were leaving tomorrow? Would your leader be miserable if you said you were leaving tomorrow? Decide right now, here, today, to make indisputable value part of your personal brand and you will live a life uncommon. Don't just be yourself. Become the best version of yourself. And there you have it. These are some really great ideas to consider when thinking about your personal brand and being more intentional about it. He said, brand is created by default. It's created by default, just like we talked about. Culture is created by default. It's how people show up. It's how they interact with people. It's how you communicate with each other. Like this is important for us to consider, especially as leaders. We do this training and part of the training, we give everyone sticky notes and we have two boards and one of the boards says qualities of a great leader and then qualities of a bad leader. (laughs) And everyone gets to write down on the sticky notes what qualities they appreciate in the leaders they've worked with. And you get to go up and put each of those sticky notes on one of the boards. It's always interesting because, you know, a lot of people write very similar things. We appreciate leaders who are empathetic. They are great communicators. One thing that shows up all the time is tough but fair. We appreciate leaders who are tough but fair. Tough but fair means that we are able to get constructive feedback and take that and become better. We want to grow. Sometimes when our leaders are tough, we might not love it, but we do know that it helps us grow. So I love that that one always shows up for people. Tough but fair. Supportive, encouraging, a great coach. We love leaders who are great coaches. And so I share this with you because when we think about developing our personal brand and being more intentional about it, what do you want to be known for? Matthew mentioned committed, coachable, and aware. And those are three qualities that are incredible. And we, as a team at Floyd, we always look and hire people who are committed, coachable, and aware. We want to know that people are committed. They are committed. They are passionate. They are excited, not only in the business, but in their life. They're engaged in their life. They're committed to the mission of the organization. Coachable. We want people who are coachable. We learn something. We want to grow. We want to develop. We want to keep getting better. And then aware. Ooh, self-awareness. As leaders, we have to be self-aware. We need to recognize and realize how are we showing up in the world? How are we communicating? How are we making decisions? This is so important. And so we have to continue to be self-aware. And so committed, coachable, and aware. Now, here is another exercise that you can consider when building your personal brand. Write down, now maybe it's committed, coachable, and aware, and you want to build off that list, but write down the three qualities that you want to be known for. What are three qualities you want to be known for? And then like Matthew talked about, you get to look at those qualities every day and do one thing that exemplifies those qualities. And when you do that every single day, then people are going to start to recognize, oh, yeah, this is how my leader shows up. This is how this person shows up every day. And so you're being really intentional about building that brand. I remember years ago, I decided I really wanted to know what value I provided my audience. Because you're living your life. You're inside it. You don't necessarily always understand or know how are people really perceiving you. So I went onto Facebook, as one does, <laughs> and I wrote the question, 
what is one word you would use to describe me? And Matthew talks about having a thick skin and developing your brand. And we've got to be prepared for the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? But I was so blown away by the responses that I got. It was so eye-opening. And what I find so fascinating is that in people, we often don't really give our superpowers as much credit as they deserve. So you might be a leader who is really empathetic. You might be a leader who is the best coach in the world, but it might come so naturally to you that you really don't think about it. But it can sometimes be the thing that someone appreciates about you the most that you don't even realize is your superpower. And so doing that activity, and maybe you don't want to go on Facebook and ask all of your friends. Maybe you just do this with the people that are closest to you. Pick five people in your life that you're really close to and say, hey, what is one word you would use to describe me? And you're going to start to see a theme. So you'll start to see, wow, yeah, I really do have a personal brand. And then you can decide, do I want to keep showing up in this way? Or are there some qualities that maybe you don't want to be known for anymore? And you get to decide, hey, these are some things that I really want to be known for. And you get to add some incredible actions get to coach yourself into that personal brand. And so be thinking about what do you want to be known for? When you are not in the room, what are people saying about you? Maya Angelou has this beautiful quote and so many people share it. She said, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Ooh, so good. How do you make people feel? That is all encompassing when it comes to your personal brand. So I hope that you found this episode helpful. I hope that Matthew's insight got you inspired to create your personal brand and that you get to do one thing every day to make sure that that is what you're being known for. And this is just a really great exercise in general to start looking at some of the qualities that not only do you want to be known for, but maybe some things that you really want to get better at. Maybe you want to be a better coach. The best leaders in the world are great coaches. And so what does that look like? And how do you become a better coach? And Matthew actually also shares the 10 steps to becoming a coaching leader. We actually did an episode on that earlier on. And he also talks about it in his book, The Culture Solution. So there are so many resources so that you can become a better leader and start to really embody all of those qualities of leadership that we really appreciate. The leaders that you've had in your life, what they meant to you, what qualities you appreciate about them, and how you can build that personal brand that you're really proud of. As always, thank you so much for listening. We so appreciate you. If you have not yet written a review, we would so appreciate you writing a review over on iTunes or on Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. And also, if you are interested, if you're really interested in being intentional about building your personal brand and you just need a little bit of support, some guidance, whether it's to be a better coach, a better listener, a better leader in general, we would love to talk to you about coaching and what that might look like for you. So you can go to floydcoaching.com, check that out, and we can have a conversation and go from there. Thank you again for listening. And until next time, lead with culture.